Hi everybody, today we're going to be going over mutations and we've already talked about this a little bit and I'm sure you guys talked about it in general biology but we're going to go into a little bit more detail here and so I want you to look at this. This is all E. coli bacteria growing here so it's just it's really a not a very harmful strain here and you see these paper discs here before they what they did basically was they took a swab with a sample of bacteria and rubbed it all over this petri dish and what they did was take little discs of paper and dip those in an antibiotic so this is an antibiotic this is a different antibiotic and they were trying to see which antibiotic is the strongest and so you can kind of see like this one really cleared out the bacteria nobody could really grow very well in the presence of this antibiotic and you can see that this antibiotic is probably not as strong or at least doesn't travel through the media very well and so this is only holding off the bacteria to a certain level. Um, so most bacteria anyways die with the exposure to these antibiotics, but you guys might notice there's this and this. These are not paper discs. This is a single bacterium that was resistant to this antibiotic. And so you can see that one bacteria that has the mutation that makes it resistant is dividing in higher number. So this one is dividing really well and is like super duper strong and surviving here. Same with this one. You can see it's growing really, really big in the presence of this antibiotic. And so how did this bacteria, you know, figure out how to grow on this very deadly substance, whereas these other ones, you know, seem to be getting killed by it. And so let's take a look. So mutations are areas of the chromosome and these can be big areas of the chromosome or very tiny, like single nucleotide mistakes in the DNA. Um, but what happens is there's a difference in the DNA. And if we look in the nucleus and what actually comes out in the organism, we see that it's actually going to change how the organism looks, how it might act and what its anatomy looks like as well. OK, so simply a mutation is an alteration of the DNA. Um, that could be beneficial or it can be harmful or it can be neither of those. So some mutation you might not even notice. Okay. And most of us feel like mutations are probably harmful and because most of them are, and most of them result in not being able to properly make a protein that you need. And it's going to make it really hard for that organism to survive, but not always. Okay. Um, there's a number of causes for why mutations can arise. All right, sometimes it's just there's a mistake in DNA replication. So remember, replication of the DNA happens in S phase. And you might remember we unzip the DNA, right? And we're going to put the new DNA on. Sometimes the wrong nucleotide goes on there. And so you're going to get DNA that's, that's a little bit different. Okay, um, but if all things go well during DNA replication, you're going to get a cell with normal DNA, but outside factors can come into play. So anything that causes mutations, an outside factor that causes mutations is called a mutagen. And oftentimes these are referred to as carcinogens. So carcinogens specifically affect the genes that control cell replication, control the cell cycle. So carcinogens are, um, we'll say, chemicals that cause mutation in cell cycle genes. Okay, because if you can't control the cell cycle, that's going to lead to cancer. And so a lot of times we'll hear about carcinogens. But general mutagens, you know, they're going to be carcinogens. So you'll see what I mean. Um, so let's look at some examples. So UV radiation causes mutations. And usually if a UV ray mutated one of our cells, okay, let's just say, um, and let's say the UV light hit and mutated one cell on my arm and that cell died, I probably wouldn't even notice. Um, but I would notice if that one cell started to divide out of control. So usually a mutation in a single cell isn't that big of a deal unless it causes cancer. So that's what we have to worry about. Now, um, viruses can also cause mutations. Remember, viruses are just protein with DNA or RNA inside. And when those land on cells, this genetic material is going to come in. And that's going to change um, the genetic material inside the host cell. 
And so sometimes this extra DNA can insert itself in the host genome and cause mutations. Um, so for you teenagers, you get the HPV vaccine. And it's really important to get that one because HPV, for example, um, causes cervical cancer. So the genetic material in the HPV virus can mutate DNA within the cervix. And so it's really important to get that prevented. Okay, um, other microorganisms can sort of do the same thing. Um, environmental poisons and irritants, this is really important when it comes to exposing your body to different poisons, like poisons that are even in things like deodorant or uh, even in our food supply, there are environmental poisons in things like uh, pesticides. Okay, so you wanna reduce your exposure to that. Alcohol, diet, smoking, these are all mutagens. Um, diet, their high fat diets uh, tend to cause more mutations. All right. Um, what you do as a career affects your ex exposure to different mutagens, like coal miners, for example, are exposed to a lot of mutagens. Firefighters, if you think about it, they're inhaling all those fumes, and you can see here that they have this much increased risk for these certain cancers. So 102% increase of a risk for testicular cancer if you're a firefighter. Okay, now, as far as mutations go, like I said, if there's a mutation on your arm and that cell dies, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so let's look at where mutations can happen. So let's start over here with somatic mutations. So remember, these are gametes, the sperm and egg. All your normal cells are somatic cells. And so let's say the mutation happened in one of your somatic cells. Then as you grow, only the cells that arise from that particular cell will inherit the mutation. And so usually you have enough good cells in your body, if that's harmful, that you're gonna be all right. Okay, now over here you can see if there's a mutation in when the egg was made, so let's say there was a mutation during S phase of meiosis, then the egg is gonna contain that mutation, and that means the zygote will have the mutation and every cell thereafter, okay? So if it's a mutation in your sex cells and your gametes, there is every, every single cell in that organism's body is going to get it. Okay. All right. And what's also important is this, this baby, for example, will pass on the mutation because every cell has it. So that means ovarian cells, testicular cells are all going to have it. This baby, on the other hand, it's likely that that's not going to become a gamete producing cell, so they won't pass it on. All right, for instance, cancer is usually something that happens to you in adulthood, and so you wouldn't pass it on to your children. Um, unless cancer runs in your family, then you could pass it on. All right, so sickle cell anemia is a really common um, harmful mutation that we, we talk about. And so it's actually a normal blood cell looks like this. This is what a sickle cell patient's blood looks like. So these are unable to hang on to oxygen as well. So they feel anemic, they feel tired because their red blood cells can't deliver oxygen to their cells. So their cells are unable to get the oxygen needed for cellular respiration. All right, the other thing that happens is they get these lesions because these sickle cells, they tend to stick to each other and form clots and things like that. It's a tough disease, okay? Now there's other harmful disease, uh, harmful mutations, so like cystic fibrosis we've talked about, thalassemia is another uh, recessive disease that um, is caused by this. Uh, albinism, also a mutation that gets passed down. Okay, so the next thing is mutations that we talked about, like you could have deletions where parts of the chromosome gets deleted. These are also called block mutations. And so you can get whole groups of genes disappearing, accidentally added on, translocating to other chromosomes. So chromosomal mutations affect many, many, many genes. Okay, so yeah, you could have a, a deletion there. Now, we're gonna get into gene mutations, not chromosomal mutations. So we're gonna zero in on the actual genetic code here. So we're looking at the DNA sequence here. 
And so you can see that for this DNA, this is going to be the matching mRNA, and these are going to be the amino acids. And so what if we were to change one of the nucleotides? So this is a point mutation where we're going to change T to C. And you can see that's going to change the mRNA too, but it's not going to change the sequence. So you see it's the same amino acid sequence. These are going to fold up the same way, okay? And they're going to have the same properties. You won't know a thing, even though you have a mutation. Okay, so a substitution is just when we substitute for another nucleotide there. All right, so it only affects a single gene, not a set of genes. Okay, now, let me click through these for a second. Okay, so let's take a look at this mutation. So, oops, all right. So this is a substitution. They, uh, they got uh, rearranged a bit, you can see. And so we have the wrong amino acid that's coded in there now. And so this is called a missense. And this may not seem like that big of a deal, a single amino acid being different, but that's actually how sickle cell anemia is inherited. It's just a different amino acid. And just that one will make hemoglobin shaped a lot differently and it'll make your blood function a lot differently. So if you think about it, you know, if this is the way the protein normally folds up, if there's a different amino acid, that might be a hydrophilic one. So it might cause the whole thing to be different because lysine is hydrophilic and needs to be outside where the water is, okay? Whereas before, it was maybe a hydrophobic amino acid. So you can see this is going to be a lot different than this. All right. A nonsense mutation. Let's take a look at that. Okay. All right. This is also a single substitution, so it's at a single point. All right. And if you take a look, what's going to end up resulting is I don't know why this is being put over here. This is supposed to be over here. Um, but you can see that this is going to turn it into a stop codon. And so we're actually going to be missing an entire chunk of amino acids. So our protein's going to be super short. It's just going to be kind of nonsense. It's not going to be a whole protein at all. All right. Now, something else you guys have to know is what a frame shift is. So what this is, is when we insert, see, again, I don't know why this is landing in the wrong place. This should be over here. Um, but if we insert nucleotides here, that's going to change every amino acid thereafter. So it's shifting the reading frame of the ribosome. So every single pair, three pair codon is going to be different. So these are much more harmful types of mutations. So this whole thing is going to be drastically different than it's supposed to be. All right. So like we said before, sickle cell is just a, just a simple you know, it's supposed to be a T and it got changed to an A. And because of that, it folds completely differently and causes a new shape in those cells. All right, so that's the main thing you got to know about mutations and we'll see you in class.